the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, please be seated. So that they treat our fathers before us, those who believe they persecute, those who were good they condemn, those who were hard working they enslaved into harder work. They did this to us. They did this to us freely of their own will, thinking that they were gods. But we, and our forefathers and foremothers and ancestors before us, know who the God is, and the God is the God in our hearts who calls us into a heavenly relationship that transcends this earth, that transcends those who look at the evil ones, who rejoice when they do even more wicked than the day before. They rejoice at suffering, they rejoice at death, they rejoice at imprisonment, slavery, and oppression. We, who are the oppressed, who weep, who hunger, who are living in poverty, we seek a better day, and the better day that comes through redemption and faith in Him, not to accept that which is unjust, not to abide with that which is evil, but to set ourselves apart from it in a spiritual context so that we are strengthened by our faith in God and no one can shake it. Nothing. No power on earth is more power than our, powerful than our faith in Jesus. His faith. Our faith in Him is, is well honored and well rewarded. We have an insight, we have knowledge, we have teachers, we have instructors, we have models to go before us. We have people that have shown us the way. We can follow the way and surely arrive. Uh, I've been watching train spotting videos. What that is, people who watch trains, they're a hobby. And they know everything about the engines, the, the wheel bases, the tracks, the switches, the lights, they know all about the routes. And they, because they know about these things, they're, they become you know, very kind of expert on it, and they know what they're looking at. They know the markings of each car, and where it's going to go. They can tell from that, just like people working at the railroad. These things, people who do this for a hobby. And one thing that struck me is because there are high-speed rails where you can go to certain places where passenger rails are going 110, 120, or 140 miles an hour. And we look at the freight trains that are going across the, the track of the overpass, uh, the and they're going about maybe 15 miles an hour. And the question is, uh, does the, why does the one who is so heavy burdened, or so slow, the freight train that is carrying a mile's worth of uh, freight behind it, why does it go so much slower than the fast one that's going 120 miles per hour? The answer is so we will arrive in time. They arrive surely at 15 miles an hour, they just keep on going and keep on going and keep on going. They will arrive. And by, uh, by steadfast faith, they arrive. And the one from the old, they arrive and know their cargo and their job is done. And so it is with Christianity. There are those who would say, well, take me to heaven right now. Lord, hurry up, hurry up, I'm, I'm ready. Come, Lord Jesus, come. End of the world, let's go. And there are those who say, well, no, not yet. I will arrive there when I arrive. When you will call me and I step past the bond, day by day, in faith in you, steadily going my way, steadily on my path, sure as I can be, I will arrive. And so we are here in this state of life. Some of us complete it very quickly and they're gone. Some of us have to endure it for a long time. And then we're, we surely will arrive. And so our messages are 
uh, if you go out to the mountain to pray by yourself and then come back and everybody wants you, everybody wants a piece of you, everybody wants something that you know that they don't know yet, somebody wants something they can get from you that you have that they don't have, well, realize that that was how Christ healed them all. He healed them all. The power that flowed out from him came from faith in who he was and who his father is and who knew what is the deal. He knew. He knows. So there's no conjecture about Jesus. He knows. And the power that came out from him was based on the faith of those who came expecting to be healed. They came from all those places, far off places. How did they get there? They walked. They walked from tired, silent. These are places that are weeks away. They came to see him, to heal, to hear him, and to be healed by him. What else? Multitudes. And so because of this, we also are included in this. We need a healing. We need a healing of body, mind, soul, spirit. We need your mind recalibrated. We need your physical ailment healed. How about your spiritual ailment? Can you be honest today? Can you actually be honest today with yourself and everyone? Can you experience what it is to be an honest man or woman? Can you know this, what honesty really is? Oh, honesty is a virtue. That you yes me, yes, you know me, no. Be certain about what you say. Be certain about what you do. If you are a slippery type that doesn't know what honesty is, and you say what you need to say in order to get what you want in the moment, well then you Okay, so when you figure out that this is not a good path for you, your world comes crashing down and no one will trust you. You don't have any friends because they can't count on you. They can't believe when you say it's raining outside. They can't believe you without going looking out the window. So if you say to people that uh, you are one way and you're really not that way, then you know, perhaps you might want to try a little bit of honesty today. Be honest today. And that's one of the things. You see, it won't be humble, be, uh, be uh, have purity of heart, have compassion on others. But let's, let's work on that one today. Work on honesty today. Can you be honest today with yourself, with God, with anybody, with everybody you meet today? Can you just be the truth? Be the truth and God. So when you have these virtues within you, you are standing in the power of Christ. Christ's power is everlasting, and so is your power. If it's honest, if it's pure, if it's strong, if it's filled with faith, and you commit yourself to Him and Him alone, then everything else lines itself up according. The world will hate you, persecute you, and we laugh at them and thank God for the privilege. Thank you for this attention this morning. Thank you for your attendance. And I thank you for the ability to uh, convey to you a gospel message that is new and good news that even Jesus Christ, who is the Son of God, who is the second person of the Trinity, who is our brother in humanity, has great and undeniable love.